oh, wow, we've already had church today, haven't we? <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to keep you here a little longer. <laughs> but it was wonderful, wonderful what God has been doing in our midst. Um, he's amazing. And it's awesome to hear just everything that he's sharing with us today. We sense his hovering presence over us. Um, and I just know that um, as I approach this topic, my topic today is to kind of um, cover one of the last gifts of the Spirit. We've been hearing a series of messages about the gifts of the Spirit. And um, the, the message I'm going to talk about today is are the gifts of healings. And um, it's interesting in in the Word of God, it's actually their plural, gifts of healings, um, because there's lots of different kinds of healings. And um, as I approached this, I just realized, and I think we all sense it as a congregation, that God is urging us forward to press in for what Jesus died for on the cross, the full measure of our salvation. That word sozo in the Greek is an all-encompassing word. It is salvation from our sin, forgiveness, for, and it's, it is what gives us eternal life so that we'll never be separated from God again. That's amazing. But part of that also is the complete rejuvenation, renewal, and really resurrection of us. Um, when we're born, we're born in sin. And we uh, experience all kinds of obstacles and hindrances, even in the womb. The enemy comes after humans to try to destroy and mar the image of God in human lives. And God, who loves us so much, his whole, his, just his whole heart and everything he does is to draw us back to him and to bring us back into right relationship with him, teaching us his ways so that we won't suffer and so that we won't have to um, you know, live with all these consequences of bad seed sown. He wants us to come back to him so that we can start to eliminate these things from our lives that have brought such suffering and confusion and malfunction and all of that that we're born into because this world is under that weight of sin that entered the world through human rebellion. And, you know, I often think, you know, we're sad when we think about Adam and Eve sinning because they were in a perfect place, but I often think, well, you know, if nobody sinned till I got here, eeks. I, I, I probably could have been the one, you know, I just, you know, you realize, you, you realize that none of us is without that challenge of trying to be God ourselves instead of letting God be God. And so um, I feel like we're in such an important season to be drawing close to God. Always we should be drawing close to God, but he's really urging us in this hour. It's a serious hour in the world. We see the devil rampaging around the world and through our nation and through our community and through our families and our neighborhoods. We see it. Um, but we also know that there's a kingdom that is under the orders of God that's advancing and growing in the earth. And we're a part of that. And there's a soon and coming king who's coming back to set everything in right order. And we are a part of preparing the way for the Lord. And we are a part. So those of us who've stepped into this place of receiving Jesus as our Savior, inviting God into our heart, the old man dies. That's what baptism in water is all about. It's a representation of death to the old, to the, the old self being raised up anew in Jesus Christ. And even better than that, too, it just gets better and better. We ascend with him through the Holy Spirit because we receive the Spirit of God. And now we know we 
through our unity with God, can be seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, far above all principality and power and every name that's named, because we're in Christ. We have that position as we submit our lives to Jesus Christ, as we submit to the word of God, as we come into the plan of God for us, and we all start in a broken place. We all start in a place of ignorance, but God is eager to bring us into this life of triumph and really conquering over the works of darkness. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil, and he has now called those of us who've opened our heart to receive him He's called us alongside to partner with him to destroy the works of the devil. In our lives, but in the lives of others and in the earth. But in order to do that, we don't do it in our own strength. And so that's what a lot of this series has been about, is how desperately we need. Now we know that when we open our heart to Jesus, Holy Spirit comes in, takes residence. We're a new creation in Christ. The old man is gone and the new has come. However... There's also a baptism of the Holy Spirit, where as we surrender our lives and open up, there is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit that can come upon us to empower us and in a, a mighty way that's not our strength, it's the strength of God to overcome and to display the glory of God in our lives. Now, this is an ongoing thing. Every day we need, a, we need a fresh infilling. This is not a one-and-done deal. This is a day-by-day -day walk, moment-by-moment. -moment. In fact, the Apostle Paul said, daily I die. Daily I crucify my flesh. Daily. And I submit to God. But as we submit to God and come into that place, then we can resist the devil and he will flee from us because as we submit to God, we can be filled with the Spirit of God and move forward with him. When you came in today, um, you probably received one of these, which is a, uh, a prayer focus in this season of Pentecost. You know, it's so interesting with the different calendars, with the Roman calendar that most of us go by in our culture, and then the Hebrew calendar, there's, it, when we get to, um, sometimes those calendars are pretty united, and, and the things happen at the same time. But sometimes there's a difference. And it's interesting to me that this year there's been kind of a difference. So we had, you know, Resurrection Sunday on our calendar. Um, but then there was another <laughs> Resurrection Day. If you looked at the Hebrew calendar because of Passover and all of that that the uh, Jewish community celebrates. And it's been the same with Pentecost. You know, Pentecost is... Um, what we call it, it's, it's uh, sort of, the, uh, I think it's the Latin name, for um, that 50 days after the resurrection, really, of Jesus. Um, and it's also, in the Jewish community, it's called the Feast of Shavuot. Um, and Shavuot is also when they celebrate that God met with the children of Israel after they came out of Egypt, after they were rescued by God, coming out of Egypt, and God came down to meet with them so that they could come into alignment with him, and he gave them the Torah um, at, at Sinai. And they celebrate that um, as the Feast of Shavuot. And I just want you to know that feast um, will be celebrated by Jews around the world. I think it starts... I think it starts in the evening of June 11th, and then there's a couple days they celebrate those that are in Israel and those that are outside of Israel. So it's like from the evening of 11th, the 12th, and the 13th. So this year, we know uh, for our service last week, we celebrated Pentecost according to the Roman calendar and the church calendar, and it was a, a wonderful um, service where God really has been ministering to us and, and Pastor Michael gave such a good teaching on um, the gifts of tongues and interpretation of tongues. And, and, um, and many came forward to receive their prayer language and to receive a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And um, we'll have a time at the end of this service, too, where we'll, we'll invite folks forward. But 
I, I had such a sense that God wants our congregation and whoever's within hearing um, to really press into the Lord for this time, the season of out pouring, it's like we have these two Pentecosts we're celebrating, but it's a season, and it's always a season to receive from the Holy Spirit. But this, you know, God works in times and seasons, and um, there's so much that we have yet to learn about this. We hear it, we talk about it, but we need to press into the Lord so that we are changed and we don't just read about it from the Bible. We need to be reading about it from the Bible, but we need to step into it and become those living examples of the glory of the Lord that comes to rest in his people and manifest through his people so that those that don't know Jesus can come to know him. Because we are here on the earth in this battle in, with, a, with a mission, with a purpose. God is not happy that we're suffering and having to fight, but he said in the world, you know, Jesus said, in the world you will have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world, and there's meaning and purpose to it because we're moving towards an expected end. And as we move in close to God, he'll take those tribulations and those trials and those tests and those battles we're in, and he'll use them for glorious purposes. He'll use them even as we surrender to him and walk with him. He'll use them in blessings in our own lives, but not just in our lives, in the lives of others. And the display of his glory will be seen in our lives as we cooperate with him and move with him in the battles and through the battles to victory. Um, and so I, I just think it's really important for us to personally take time to press in to God for our own understanding of where we fit into his body and what gifts he wants us to operate in. We've all been given, we're all invited and given the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit can operate through any one of us with his gifts at any time if we're willing to do it. But then there's also unique kind of callings and unique personalities that God works through. So we're not all going to look alike when we do it. And it's not all going to manifest in the same place because we have different assignments and pathways he sends us into. So it's personal as well as corporate. And it's very important for us to press into God to know what he's calling us to and how to operate in what he's um, asking us to do, drawing on the power of the Holy Spirit, on the word of God, so that we can manifest his glory. And this does take equipping. It does, but first and foremost, we're equipped by the Holy Spirit. And we're equipped as we read the word of God. We cannot do this without being in the word of God all the time. The word of God will always um, it, it's it's a, the authority for everything we do, um, especially as we move in the gifts of the Spirit. We'll never be doing anything if we're truly moving in the gifts of the Holy Spirit that's against the Word of God. And that's a very important part as we seek Him to see His glory manifest through us and His power manifest through us. We stay submitted to Jesus and the Word of God. And it has to have total authority over our lives. And so what the word says, we obey by the power of the Holy Spirit. We can't do it in the flesh. The flesh is not willing. The flesh is rebellious. But we have our spirits are united with Holy Spirit. And so we can, we can by the power that God gives us, comply and walk with him in holiness. And without things between us and God, even though we're not completely perfected yet in terms of the outworkings of our salvation, yet we are called to this walk, which is a miraculous walk, and yet it requires some things of us. And so I just encourage you to um, take this prayer focus and um, pray into it for your own life. But I'd, I want to right now just read some of these prophetic words that have been spoken over this congregation and our city, our region. <clears throat> And um, it, these were spoken years ago, and people have been praying into it 
for years, um, but I believe it's time for these things to manifest in a mighty and powerful way. And so I'm going to begin. I'll just read down through these, and I, we've printed them out so that you can pray into them, and you can agree with heaven about it, and you can see and just call it into your circumstances, your assignments, wherever you are, reminding yourself that God has said this is what he wants to do. So Sam Hinn in January 23, 1998 said, during the worship I saw the Lord walk into this church. I saw him carrying the most beautiful gold vessels that stood this high, about four feet. In the Middle East, they have these beautiful gold vessels with wide lips. And I saw the Lord walk to every corner of this building and he took one of the vessels and placed it at every corner. And the Lord said, each vessel is filled with oil and as people leave, they will take the anointing with them. Folks, it's here today. Jesus is here today hovering over us with that anointing. As we go out today, take the anointing with you and keep taking and keep asking for more and more. He, the Lord, said, I will release healing in this house for this city. Then Cindy Jacobs, who, was, who spoke here in September 1998, had a word. And the Lord would say to you that I'm getting ready to visit your church, for you have prayed for a visitation. The Lord says if you press into the miraculous, you will see that the mantle of miracles will fall. I am going to pour out an anointing that is in your inheritance, and I am getting ready to pour out signs and wonders and miracles. The Lord says there will be a day when the anointing will flow and the river will flow out of this church to such an extent that they will bring ambulances to the doors and people will say, if you're dying, go to Bethel because there's a healing Jesus there. Hallelujah. Let it be, Lord. The Lord would say that you have been through many persecutions and trials. You have been through times of wilderness, and the enemy has tried to come in like a flood. But the Lord says, I'm going to change things, and there is a turning in the heavens. The Lord would say, I am bringing an anointing of finance, an anointing to, is going to pour out, and I'm going to release millions of dollars for missions in this church. I say that the wealth of the sinner has been laid up for the righteous and is getting ready to be poured out. Barbara Wentrobel, October 22, 2000. <clears throat> for the Lord says, know that this is an apostolic church that I'm raising up. That means it's like the New Testament church. It's in the order and governance of the New Testament church. This is an apostolic church that I'm raising up. This is an Antioch church. And I say, and I'll just stop here, an Antioch church was the church that we read about in the book of Acts that was a sending city. It was a city where the saints would gather and and they kind of rejuvenate, but they'd be sent from there. And it, they were sent into all the world. Um, this is an anti Antioch church, and I say, I shall raise up teams in this place, and these teams shall walk in a breaker anointing. For the Lord says, even as I blow my wind upon this place, know that I am releasing a breaker anointing upon these people, and you shall break that that has held this area captive. For the Spirit of God says, I destined this city as an apostolic city, that's this city, Rochester, I destined this city as a city of revival. And God says, I'm going to have a people in this hour with a breaker anointing upon them, and they shall break the back of sickness and disease and infirmity, for I'm going to release healing power from this place, says the Lord. And that's the body of Christ at Rochester. This is our regional calling, and, and this is an important part of what God has put us here for, a sending city that will send out the goodness and the awesomeness in the salvation of the kingdom of our God. Um, I'm going to even raise up a healing school in this place, says the Lord, and they shall teach, and they shall train, and they shall know, um, and they shall activate healing ministry says the Spirit of the Lord, for the Lord would just say, know that I am extending your line. I am extending your borders 
in this hour, says the Lord. This is a word for every single one of us in this place that loves Jesus and has claimed him as our Lord. And we all have different assignments, but he wants to expand us. But he doesn't just, I'm just going to say it, God does come with power and he comes with might, but we have a part to play. It's not a magic wand. We say this a lot. This, isn't, this, this is about walking with God, submitting to God, learning his ways, conforming to his ways, loving the word of God, putting the word of God in our mouth so what comes out of our mouth are the words of God, not the words of the devil, not the words of my frustration, not the words of whatever they're saying on TV. Uh, what comes out of my mouth is what pleases Jesus. And this is a calling for every saint of God, every son and daughter of God, who's been saved by the precious blood of Jesus, filled with the Holy Spirit, and wants to honor God with our lives. We've been called, we've been created for this purpose, and he wants us to fulfill it, but we got a part to play. And we've got to enter up, enter in, and we've got to know more and more about this. And the Holy Spirit will give us understanding. I realized as I studied for this sermon today, there's so much I still don't know. I learned so much as I was kind of studying, well, what's the dif difference between the covenant right of, blood, of healing and the gifts of healings? You know, there's, it, they work together, they overlap, but there's a difference. There's, it's all a part of his covenant with us, but there's a different kind of operation, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So as um, we hear these words, we need to know that God is eager to pour this out, but he's looking for people who will cooperate and order their lives in alignment with him so he can pour his power and his love and his salvation through us. Dutch Sheets, September 26, 2003. I'm going to break off of you humanistic mindsets. We heard it this morning through the prophetic word that Jonathan brought from the Lord. Don't lean on your own understanding. Your understanding, your own understanding has been influenced by the culture around you. And guess what? We've grown up in a humanistic culture that it's not the way of God. It's not the way of God. The word of God is how we should think. The mind of Christ is how we have to think. And we can because we're in him and he dwells in us. So... I'm going to break off of you humanistic mindsets that you don't even know you have. I'm going to begin to change the way you think and the way you operate. So we better be willing to be corrected. We better be willing to get his understanding from the word of God as Holy Spirit shows us. The way you think and the way you operate, he's going to change. And I'm going to make you think like I think says God. That's pretty powerful. And then I'm going to make you my sword. And I'm going to use you and allow you to be that instrument of, instrument of mine that begins to shake things in the heavenlies in the realm of revelation. And you will move in revelation, but, but you also export revelation. We're a sending city. Remember that. And you will go to a new place of revelation and in insight by my spirit. But it is not just for you, it is also for others. So you will become an exporter of revelation. And you will be one who understands how to break strongholds of the mind. I will use you and give discernment, and you will understand how to move. Even gifts of healings for the minds of men, literally and physically, will begin to come forth from this region. I will heal mental disorders. There will be literal gifts of healings in this region that will transform minds and heal from Alzheimer's and other disorders of the mind. And insanity will bro be broken off of people. And if you will believe me for it, I will begin to release that mantle and there will be extraordinary miracles of the mind. It will be a sign of what I am doing in the spirit. And I will begin to bring physical healings to eyes in this region. And you will see gifts of healings in the miraculous begin to move in the arena of the eyes. And it is a sign about what is happening in the spirit. God wants to open our eyes to see spiritually, not just to see physically. But he says here that there's going to even be physical healings that will be demonstrated as a sign of what he's doing in the spirit. 
Dutch Sheets, this, uh, September 26, 2003. It was the same day, but it was at night. And the word of the Lord came through him, and the Lord said, I'm about to reopen wells of healing in Rochester. There is a redemptive calling in this region that has to do with miracles. The Lord said he is going to reopen a well of the miraculous in this region. As the Lord said earlier today in a prophetic word, I'm going to begin to release gifts of healings in the miraculous, in this region, for the mind. People with insanity, schizophrenia, depression, Alzheimer's, bipolar disorders, they are going to begin to be healed. What is coming is extraordinary miracles, as you read about in Acts 8 and 19. He is going to begin to heal disorders of the eye, such as glaucoma, cataracts, blindness, and other diseases of the eye. You are going to see these things happen. We are coming into a season of extraordinary miracles, and I believe this region is supposed to be one of the first fruit places. Now, I've given you these so that you can pray into this and to agree with heaven about this. People have been praying into this for a long time, and that's how the prophetic word works. Often God will release a word, and people have to come into agreement with it and begin to pray it forth so that we get positioned to receive what God is going to do. And you know, God's timing is different than our timing. We want it like next minute. But he asks us to participate and move in it. But this particular time that we're in right now, 2024, we've heard it from many prophetic voices that many of these prophetic words that we've been warring for for decades are coming to fruition. So we are on a place where there's, we're in a huge collision in the world between the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light in a big way right now. We see it everywhere in the natural and in the spiritual. But we're not to be afraid because if we're a part of the kingdom of God and we're aligned with God, he will go before us, he'll show our, us the way through it, and he will pour out his power through us to meet the needs that we have in the moment, whether it's for protection, whether it's for healing, whether it's for finance, whether it's just for direction, whatever it is, he wants to lead us and guide us so that we can gather in the harvest and move with him triumphantly to see the enemy defeated and overthrown. So I encourage you, pray into this, okay? <laughs> I know that there is actually a fast that many people are going to pray into. I think it starts May 29th um, nationally. Um, Dutch Sheets brother Tim Sheets had kind of announced this in his service, and it goes for seven days. But you know what? You do what God chose you to do with this, and, and pray and keep seeking God for how he wants to manifest his life and his power in your life and through your life. I mean, we need it for our own needs, but we need it so that we can also meet other people's needs. So having said all that and laid the groundwork, um, <clears throat> I want just to um, briefly, and I'm telling you, you could preach Sunday after Sunday after Sunday about these things with healings. Um, but I just want to frame it in the context that we've been learning about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. First of all, um, there is healing that is our covenant right as blood-bought sons and daughters of God. It's been laid out from the very beginning of the Bible, and it was a part of the old covenant as well as the new. And I'm just going to quickly read through some of these scriptures. Just, this is the word of God. God, and I'm going to address it right up front, God wants us healed. This is not a maybe he wants me healed. God says from beginning of the word to the end of the world, word, he wants us healed. And this has been provided on the cross for us but we have to lay hold of it by faith and by aligning with him and moving with him to receive. And he is eager for us to be made whole in our spirit, in our soul, which is our emotions, our mind, and our will, and also in our bodies. 
And so we need to press in for this because it's God's promise, and Jesus paid dearly for this on the cross. And so we need to avail ourselves of this by faith and pursue it. Now, I'm telling you, the enemy does not want us to conquer here. And we know it because we feel the resistance. But it is time, especially, I say, in this region, but everywhere, it's time to see that spirit of infirmity broken. It's time to see a breakthrough in the healings of God. So the covenant blessings of God, I'm just going to begin very quickly. Right after they came out of Egypt, and, you know, they've been rescued, they've been slaves in Egypt, and now they're following Moses, who's been led, uh, who's leading them as a deliverer, but pointing them to God, telling them what God is saying. They're following him, and they come to a place uh, in the desert where the waters are bitter. And I'm just going to read this now, Exodus 15, 23 through 26. Now, when they came to Marah, they could not drink the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Marah. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? So he cried out to the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. When he cast it into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made a statute and an ordinance with them. The he there is God. God Almighty. And these are his people he's just rescued from Egypt. And he's setting them as a nation in the earth to bring light to all the other nations about who he is and how he works and what he wants on the earth that has been all messed up by Satan and all the rebellion of people that want Satan's way. And he's, so this is God saying this. And he, there he made a statue and an ordinance with them, and there he tested them. And he said, now pay attention to this because this applies to us too. If you diligently heed the voice of the Lord your God and you do what is right in his sight, give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of the diseases on you which I brought on the Egyptians, for I am the Lord who heals you. That last phrase, for I am the Lord who heals you, he was telling them one of his names. He was saying, I'm revealing myself to you. I'm your God, and I am the Lord who heals you. All healing comes from God. He actually created our bodies to heal themselves. We're wonder fearfully and wonderfully made, Psalm 139 says. His creation is amazing. However, there are things that can hinder our healing. And this is why we must be in the word. We've got to be complying with his commandments, with his word. And, you know, this was a promise to people who who didn't have Holy Spirit in their heart yet. They, they were being drawn to God, but they didn't know the salvation that we know on this side of the cross. They knew the salvation of God who, who was protecting them, preserving them, and revealing himself. And as they cooperated, he would work through their lives mightily. But it was a little different relationship than we have. We have a better covenant. But it's also, this, it's all part of the same truth of God about who he is, how he wants his government or his kingdom to manifest in the earth. So then we go on in Exodus 23. It's a little later in the journey that they're on. Exodus 23, verses 25 through 26. So you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. God is showing us his heart. This is what he wants for us. And, you know, this is, these are important scriptures to even put into your mouth um, daily. Why do we bless our food? Well, remember, God said, I will bless your bread and water and remove sickness from your midst. That's a good word to confess if you're not feeling well in the, and you get up in the morning. This is a part of your covenant. As much as your salvation, eternal life is. This is a part of the covenant of God. And um, we need to understand this. There's been a lot of confused teaching. There's been a lot of lies that the devil's released. But this is a part of who we are as the people of God. 
I'm going to skip over a lot. There's, you know, you could go on and on about this covenant of healing. But just even in Psalm 91, we know Psalm 91 is a wonderful protection psalm. If you don't know it, you need to know it, and you need to get in it. It's a great thing to proclaim over your life every day because it sets an order in the spiritual realm, and the angels obey the word of the Lord. So it's good to release the word of the Lord from your mouth. Psalm 91, I'm just going to go verses 9 and 10. Because you've made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Well, we know what it's like when all of a sudden they announce a plague is upon us. We've all had that experience worldwide recently. But we don't have to participate. We don't have to participate with that plague because the shed blood of Jesus will protect us. And as we apprehend that by faith, healing will flow. And even if we get infected, he can kill that disease, and he can give us resurrection life and power to survive. So I don't care what the news announces tomorrow or next week or next month. We live under the shelter of the Most High, the blood of Jesus, in the name of the Lord. Then we get skip to 14 and 16, because he said his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. Because we've set our love upon him. This is a relationship. This isn't a religious to-do book. This isn't, oh boy, if I just do it right, then I can convince God he's going to do this for me. No, no. This is a moment-by-moment -moment love relationship with the king of the universe who has given his life for us and draws us into intimacy with him. And he wants us to know how he thinks so we'll think like him. So we can be unified with him. And we can enter into the promises that he gives us all through his word. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him, God says. I will set him on high because he's known my name. Learn the names of God. Learn who he says he is and how he operates. He's the Lord God who heals us. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him with long life. I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Then skip over to Proverbs 4, 20 through 23. A classic verse about healing in the word of God and very instructional. All of Proverbs is get wisdom. It's the principal thing. We want wisdom. Wisdom comes from the Holy Spirit, from the Word of God. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ears to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. That word could be translated medicine to all their flesh. This is God's medicine. The word of God, his presence, he will heal those things, and he will deal with those things that concern us. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. We want to meditate on words of life. They come from here, not words of death that you see on the ads on TV that are trying to get you to buy another kind of prescription drug. Not, not on all of the fear that's released about, oh, how terrible this thing is and how terrible this thing is. And then we put it in our mouth and we meditate. Oh, no, I've got this. And now I've got this. And my Aunt Tilly had this. And I inherited this. And lies, lies. That's, that's the flesh. That's the mind of the world. It will not profit us. The mind of Christ brings life. The word of the Lord. Get those lying words out of your mouth. I'm not saying walk in denial. If you've got a problem, you admit the problem, but you say, thank you, Jesus, you're the answer. And we're going to talk about your power to heal me every day. We're going to talk about the future of me not having this thing I'm battling through right now. This is all a part of covenant healing. This is available to Whosoever will come and partake, this is all a part of this. If we'll come to Jesus, if we'll come to God, humble ourselves and receive, and then align with what he teaches us, his understanding and his ways, and we do it daily, moment by moment, day by day. James 5, we all know this one. It's, it's familiar, but in the New Testament, 
This is an example, again, of part of the covenant of healing. And it's, if anyone among you is sick, let him call the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will, heal, will save the sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. This is a part, this is a covenant grace, a covenant blessing for us. We all sin. We all have things that get in the way of us living uprightly with the Lord as we should every day. There can be strongholds in our life that we trip over a lot and we need the help of our brothers and sisters to help us. But God is a forgiving God. The sin's already paid for, but we have to avail ourselves of it by his forgiveness by faith. And so we come to him quickly and confess our sins so that he can blot it out with the blood of Jesus and cleanse us and right, rightly align us with him so we can receive that move of his power through the Holy Spirit to deal with what is troubling us. And, and so this is a ministry that we should just walk in all the time in the body of Christ, ministering to each other so that we're helping one another to lay hold of these healing promises and these graces that have been given to us by God. 1 Peter 2, 24. I'm just going to read this particular verse because it's important to really understand who himself, of course, is talking about Jesus Christ, he himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree that we, having died to sins, might live for righteousness by whose stripes you were healed. So we've had a lot of teaching about that in this church. You already were healed. It's already a done deal in heaven, but now we have to receive it by faith. It's, been, it's already been provided by God, and he wants us to receive it by faith, by aligning us with his word and walking with him into it. So what I have just been talking about is, is, are those covenant blessings that everybody who is a child of God, this, this just operates in our life all the time. But now, my assignment today was to talk about the gifts of the Spirit, the gifts of healings. And I don't have a lot of time, but I'm going to try to just unpack this a little bit. And you should do your own study of this. And there are a lot of different people you could, you know, just read, start with the Holy Spirit and the Word and just look it up and really read through the life of Jesus. He demonstrates, he kind of, he, he was demonstrating both, really. Um, Jesus was walking, believe it or not, in a sense, he was walking under the old covenant. You know, he, until the new covenant was given. He was the bringer of the new covenant. He brought the kingdom of God. But we know that he went up to the temple to celebrate um, the feast of the Lord. His parents made a sacrifice that sacrifice of doves when he was dedicated to the Lord. He was under the old covenant. But then, obviously, John the Baptist announced the beginning of this outpouring that God was going to do and demonstrate through the life of Jesus Christ the God-man, <laughs> he was God, but he was fully man. He demonstrated it as a human. He didn't borrow on his Godhead when he healed. He didn't, no, he did it the same way we do. He took direction from the Father. He said, I only do what my Father shows me to do. I only say what he tells me to say. And he did it by the outpouring of the Holy Spirit through his life. He was baptized of the Holy Spirit when he was baptized by John and came up and the dove came down. It's a demonstration to us because God wanted us to see in flesh and blood life how we are to live as sons and daughters of God. So God was willing to come as a human and to demonstrate this and then become the sacrifice so that we could enter into this. And so... Um, we see that Jesus operated in both, but most of the time, Jesus was operating in the gifts of healings. It was because he had the Holy Spirit without measure. And so he would just pour out this power when he moved. And it, instant, 
you know, it would be very powerful and it would interrupt and it would, because there was nothing in him that hindered the flow of the Holy Spirit. He was without sin. He was in complete submission to the Father and the Holy Spirit. He, he was one with the word. He actually was the word, okay? So, but he as a, as a human, he had to learn the word. Even as a kid, he had to be taught in the synagogue. He had to learn from the Holy Spirit. He had to, it's amazing that he took that limitation on and demonstrated how we are to do this how we are to live this life of God that he's called us into. We are the children of God, and he wants us to partner with him in what he's called us to. So the gifts of, the he of healings, just to um, help us understand, this is an empowerment that comes um, from the Holy Spirit as the Spirit wills. Um, I actually... Well, I'm, I don't have time to go through the whole 1 Corinthians 12. We've read that week after week. But the gifts of the Spirit are these power releases of the Holy Spirit. And it's as God wills, and as we're available, we're listening to God, and he wants to release it through us in an individual circumstance where his dunamis power um, flows in a mighty way. Um, I just want to read to you, and I know I wrote it down here somewhere. I've got so many notes up here. Okay, dunamis. Dunamis is a word that is given for this this power of God, and it's um, it means. I just want you to think about what this is that that is dwelling within us that the Holy Spirit wants to release through us in order to destroy the works of the devil move the kingdom of darkness out of the way so he can pour in his love, his healing, his grace into the situation. Dunamis is a force. It's might. It's strength, ability, miraculous power. It can be abundance and wealth, power to produce change, the strength and might of an army, the anointing to overcome. Now, how many of you think we need this in this hour? How many do you think need this in the world? Yeah, who are in the midst of physical war, but you know we got a might of an army in us. God can hide us in the secret place in the midst of the most terrible circumstances. He sends his angels. He gives his angels charge over us. And, and they guard us in all our ways. This is available to those who will go after God with all their heart and comply to the word of God and yield. And by faith, these are released. This is what God says. We believe him. This is what the word of God says. It's the final authority, not some theology somebody came up to explain why they haven't figured it out yet. It's, it's God's word, and we have to believe him. It's the final authority, and it works. It, if, if we, as we yield, yes, we're learning. Yes, it's, it, it's a process for us as we mature. But God wants us to lay hold of this by faith. He doesn't want a powerless church. He doesn't want us just talking about it and thinking about it with our natural thinking. He wants our hearts to be aligned with him so that we yield to the mind of Christ, which is the word of God, which is his ways and what he's saying and doing. So the gifts of healing is a little different because it's an intervention by God. It flows with the covenant gifts, gifts of healing or the gift of healing. It flows with that, it's, but it's an additional kind of thing where it's, it's an operation in the spirit where Holy Spirit um, will release his power by force into a situation and we'll see an instant transformation. Um, and it doesn't mean that there isn't instant transformation as we begin to confess the word. There is. But this is when it comes with power, miraculous um, manifestations. The gifts of healing, all the gifts of the Holy Spirit, okay, we've been studying them every week, they all work together. Sometimes in a situation, they all work together. We'll see that in Jesus' life. So we learned about the word of knowledge, right? Right. Pastor David taught us about that. The word of knowledge is when all of a sudden dropped into your understanding is something you never knew before. You didn't know anything about such and such a situation or a person, or you didn't know, but all of a sudden you know. And God wants you to do something with that. So when we talk about the gifts of healing, 
it's, it's a supernatural demonstration of the power of God. It is an, it is a empowerment at a moment of time where the Holy Spirit, as we're walking with him, releases the tools that we need to see that darkness scattered, to see that work of darkness destroyed. And we have to learn how to cooperate with him and do this. I don't know how many of you participated in the Mario Murillo meetings, <clears throat> excuse me, that happened in 2020 in Batavia. But for those that did, we saw, and anytime you watch Mario Murillo, He's an evangelist. He's called to be an evangelist. So he goes out and he preaches the word. But in the midst of preaching the word, the gospel, in, in the midst of it, Holy Spirit will give him a word of knowledge. And he'll just, like, point to a lady. And he'll say, ma'am, yeah, you there, stand up. And she'll stand up. And he'll say, you were in a terrible accident, like 15 or 16 years ago. And you've been in constant pain ever since. The doctors have done everything they can do. And, and you, you don't get any relief. And you can't, you can't move freely. You can't. God says right now he wants to heal you. Will you receive it? And she says yes, and she's healed. He releases that healing. It's not him doing it. It's the Holy Spirit. It, he's yielded to the Holy Spirit. And he moves in power by the direction of the Holy Spirit. And then he'll go on and preach more about the gospel. And then he might say, but sir, you, you battle depression. God said he wants that removed right now. And if people will receive it by faith, and when we're in a, a, a situation where Holy Spirit's hovering, there's even the gifts of faith released to people so they can receive it. Because the gift of faith is another empowerment of the Holy Spirit. And he'll give it to people so they can receive. One of the things we see in the New Testament that demonstrates the gift of faith to receive healing was the woman with the issue of blood. She knew that if she could just touch the hem of his garment, she'd be healed. She believed it. And Jesus didn't even know who touched him. Jesus didn't notice her. She moved towards him and by faith drew it from him. And then he released the gift of healing and she was healed instantly. But you see, these gifts operate by the Holy Spirit's direction in specific situations that we walk into specific um, assignments that we have. But if we're walking with the Lord in this relationship, this love relationship with him, learning every day more about his word and how he thinks, letting him correct us where we think improperly, and let me tell you, he's been correcting me a lot, um, and, and so that we're aligning with the word and not just something we've been taught or something that we've heard, or but that really he wants us to see, then we're yielded to him, and he can pour through us to display his glory. It's not about us. It's about him. But it is our assignment to cooperate, and we have that responsibility to make ourselves available to him so that he can work through us because we're his hands and feet in the earth. Jesus is the head. We're his body in the earth. He wants to work through his body so that the world can see he loves them, he died for them, and there's a kingdom where there's no disease. There's a kingdom where there's no need. There's a kingdom available as we lay hold of it by faith, by surrendering to the Lord, where we can lay hold of these promises of God. And we want everybody to know about this because, yes, there is another kingdom, the kingdom of this world, the darkness, and it's a terrible kingdom because the devil, all he wants to do, Jesus said, is to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came that he would bring us life, and that more abundantly. Let me tell you, sickness and disease is not abundant life. Now, what God does through those battles is we fight through it is abundant life. Because sometimes it's a battle that we fight through, and it takes time, and it, sometimes we do better than others, but, and that's that covenant grace. But then there's these times when we can, we can just receive this power of the Holy Spirit, and he'll move through us mightily, and we will see the gifts of miracles demonstrated. And, and see, these are the gifts of the Holy Spirit, and they work together. And um, I'm just going to read a couple of verses about this. I could go on and on, but I, 
can see the time. So I'm going to just read um, Matthew 8, 14 through 17. We're going to see this was pretty early in Jesus' ministry. Now, when Jesus had come into Peter's house, he saw his wife's mother lying sick with a fever. So he touched her hand, and the fever left, and she arose and served them. That's a gift of healing. She had a fever. She was sick. Now, Peter's mother-in-law probably could have confessed the word and thanked God for her healing, and, and the process would have been working in her body to heal her. That's the covenant gift of healing, that, that she could have been lying in bed saying, thank you, God, you're my healer. Thank you. I believe your word. You are the Lord God who heals me. You'll bless my bread and water. Remove sickness from, from me. And that would have worked too, but it wouldn't have worked instantly like this probably. It's the gift of healing that it's those gifts of healing that it's that power of God that surges and destroys the virus, renews strength. It's a miraculous operation of the Holy Spirit. And it was demonstrated here. And so then when evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon-possessed. And he cast out the spirits with the word and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, he himself took our infirmities and he bore our sicknesses. Now, in this case, we see that Jesus was demonstrating what he was going to do, even as he was moving around, that he was he was bringing the new covenant to them, and this was a part of the new covenant, and and he was um, that he wanted folks to know that this was a part of their portion. But what I what I want us to see here is that um, Jesus functioned in many gifts at the same time. It says in this portion of scripture, I, di I didn't um, read it right there, but um, that he saw their faith and he responded to their faith. And so it was like the Holy Spirit moved through him in answer to the faith of, of people that he was healing. Now, as he did this, it, it riled up the religious leaders um, in one of these stories in the Bible, we see the man who they brought in on the cot, um, and they let him down through the roof because they couldn't get in because there were so many people who were there wanting Jesus to minister to them. And when he saw that man, and it, the Bible said they had faith, but then he saw their faith, and he said, you know, young man or whatever, your sins are forgiven. And then the religious leaders were all freaking out. Who is this that thinks he can forgive sins? Well, Jesus was announcing what he could see in the spirit that this person, he, he had that, that these people, that this person had confessed to God and God had forgiven him. And whatever that was that was hindering his healing had been dealt with by his heart of response to God. And so then God said, well, What's easier for me to say your sins are forgiven or to rise up and carry a bed and walk? And so he said, so that you might know that the Son of Man has the, the power to forgive sins, rise up and walk. And so we know that story. But you see, what we see in these things with Jesus, and these are just a couple of examples, we see that the gifts of healing were in operation. He delivered them from those demonic powers that were causing these diseases. Now, not every disease is necessarily got a demon attached to it. However, every disease comes from the devil. Every disease comes because he is eager to kill, steal, and destroy. And he's eager to put infirmity and pain and affliction and disease upon us. And, and so Holy Spirit deals with that, and the Word of God deals with that like a sword. Um, but what we see here is that in the midst of operating in the gifts of healings, you will also see the other gifts manifest. You will see the word of knowledge. You will see deliverance. That is part of the gifts of healing, really, is, is being healed from demonic oppression. That's part of the plural gifts of healings. The discerning of spirits operates. That's a gift of the spirit. And you address those afflictions, those things that the devil, those works of darkness that the devil is doing against the will of God. 
And people have come into agreement sometimes with things so that they're under that kind of bondage. They can break agreement with that, receive forgiveness, and be set free and see the healing flow. Now, just moving into the early church, lots of examples of this gift being used at that time. Acts 15, 14 through 16. And believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women, so that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Imagine that. The glory of the Lord was so around Peter. He was in such unity with God. The Holy Spirit was just hovering over him. The presence of the, the glory cloud was with him. And as he walked, God was healing people. Who he, as he passed by his shadow, the glory surrounding him was healing people. The power of the Lord. Um, and then it goes on to say, Also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities of Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, they, off, they go together, sickness and unclean spirits, and they were all healed. Acts 8, 4 through 8. This is later on. It's after a lot of persecution broke out and the saints were scattered. It says, therefore, those who were scattered went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and he preached Christ to them. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed, and lame were healed, and there was great joy in that city. Folks, this is our portion. We're called to this. We're called to go out and preach the good news of the gospel of the kingdom. And the gospel of the kingdom is that salvation of God, the forgiveness of sins, and that relationship with Jesus, but it's also the fullness of what comes as a son and daughter of God. And we need to understand this and move and, and get the equipping that we need by Holy Spirit and even the equipping that's offered in the body of Christ so that we can begin to move more powerfully in these gifts. Um, I just going to close quickly. Um, and I would say like the third and last part of this is we have to stir up the gifts that are in us. God wants us to stir this up. And there are a couple of scriptures that I'm going to read to you if I can find my paper here. Um, I have so many papers. It's a good thing I'm not going through them all or we'd be here till like 6 o'clock tonight. Okay. 1 Timothy 4, 14 through 16. Paul is writing to Timothy, a young man who's been trained and equipped and Paul is sent out with the good news. He's a young man committed to the Lord, but he's young. <laughs> and, and yet he has a lot of responsibility. And Paul is writing to him and he says... Timothy, do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you by prophecy with the laying on of the hands of the eldership. Meditate on these things and give yourself entirely to them that your progress may be evident to all. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this, you will save both yourself and those who hear you. Listen to what that says. Listen to it. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them. This is a word to us. Being sent out by God in our daily walk to the bank, the gas station, around the neighborhood, walking the dog, whatever it is we're doing, or whether we're sent into the office or wherever it is God tells us. He might even just tell us to go to the mall and share the good news of Jesus. But this is what we have to do. Meditate on these things. Give yourself entirely to them, that your progress may be evident to all. Take heed to yourself and to the doctrine. In other words, keep yourself in alignment with God. Keep yourself in alignment with the Word of God. Keep the Word of God in your mouth. Take heed and continue in this all the time. Continue in this, for in doing this you will save both yourself, your 
protection for yourself, healing for yourself, provision for yourself, the miracles God wants to give you, but also those who hear you. And um, this is something we have to understand about the gifts of the Spirit. These operate most fully and most powerfully when we're sharing the good news of the gospel with people as we're going out with the word of God. This, these operate so powerfully because Holy Spirit wants people to know he's real. God wants to display his power to people. He wants people to know he's good. So our heart needs to be aligned with the Father's heart about the lost and those who are in need. And as we go, we can expect that God will meet people in their place of need as we by faith minister his truth from his word. 2 Timothy 1.6. This is in the second letter he wrote to Timothy. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. And so today, I know this is the challenge of God to us as we kind of come to the conclusion of this whole series of teachings about the gifts of the Spirit. He wants us to stir up these gifts in our lives. He wants us not to be satisfied with where we are. And folks, I know we're not satisfied. And I'm telling you, the challenge is ahead. We're going to need supernatural power to be victorious in. But it's okay because God is with us. And we're going to operate in faith and not fear. We're going to operate in truth and not lies. And God will help us. Holy Spirit can give an accelerated growth in this if he has a willing heart. If he has hearts submitted to him who are in love with him, and out of that love, we love his word, we love his ways, we, we, we are seeking him God, for his glory to be seen in and through our lives and for others to taste and see that he's good. This is our challenge today from God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Stir up the gifts that he's put in our hearts. And so as we close, I want to invite, first of all, I'll invite the altar ministry team to come up. Um, because I know that even last week as folks came up, we were invited if you wanted to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Or if maybe you don't even know Jesus and you want to receive salvation. And you want to know what this is all about. It starts with getting to know the King. It starts with getting to know your Savior. We invite you to come and we can pray with you so you can receive salvation. And you can receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit at the same time. You can receive, if maybe you haven't ever experienced the baptism of the Holy Spirit and you want to experience it, I invite you to come up. Maybe you've never spoken in tongues and you'd like to speak in tongues. It's, you know, the manifestation, that heavenly prayer language that helps us pray effectively as Romans. Romans 8 says, a Holy Spirit will help us pray effectively about things we don't know how to pray for. Maybe you want to receive that. Or maybe you need healing. If you need healing today and want someone to pray with you for healing, or maybe you just want someone to lay their hands on you for a fresh impartation from the Holy Spirit, a fresh anointing from the Holy Spirit, I invite you to come forward and receive prayer here at the altar. And, and then I do remind you that there's an operation of one of the gifts of the Spirit that's going to happen if people go and receive a prophetic word in, in Cafe Aviv after. But right now, as God has been dealing with us through the service, something has been stirred in your heart. And you know, you may be a very seasoned believer, but just need refreshing or a fresh impartation because we get weary and well-doing sometimes, even though the Bible says don't get weary and well-doing. And we do need that refreshing of Holy Spirit. So I invite you to come and receive from the Lord.